I'm Larry Poncho Brown, and you're watching Rap About TV. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like what got you interested in art? I am a teenage, I'm, a, I'm the son of a teenage parent who gave up his dream of doing art to take care of his family. So that's my beginning. My father was an artist. Um, back in the 60s, there were no real outlets for African American artists. So um, I imitated what he was doing around that time. And so over the years, my father got out of the art and I continued to stay into the arts. Uh, followed his footsteps, really went to his high school, which was vocational education, which is about foundation. Went to a vocational school um, that taught, I learned commercial art. So I learned composition, color, composition, all this stuff in high school. Lucked up and got a, um, a scholarship to go to the Merle Institute College of Art. And then the evolution was? people started seeing? Did you start showing your work or? The evolution was when I decided to stop doing sign painting and start doing graphic design and illustration. Um, so uh, my first job I did uh, was for Morgan State University doing um, illustrative work for two of their projects and that really started everything. That's when I started making the transition into doing my art for um, my, my career. So I did a poster with uh, featuring Bill Cosby uh, he was coming to do a benefit there, and um, that kind of got me started in doing my illustration work. So, I mean, if there are young young children who want to start on this path, how is there any inspiration, any any path that you would tell them to go and when to start? Um, when you say young children, you have to pardon me because I have a son that's 25. So, young children to me, instead of you buying them. Uh, expensive uh, um, video games. You buy them a pack of papers and pencils and paper. It's not really that simple. I mean, my father always made sure I had enough supplies to do whatever I wanted to do. And nowadays, folks have deviated from that. So kids got all kinds of stuff. They got iPads, but they don't have any other essentials. What else does an artist do? I think all the time. It's my, one of my favorite things to do. That's for relaxation and just... It's a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. You know, so people get it twisted. It's a life dedication. It's not a hobby. And when it's a life dedication, it's not even really working. And so, out of that, what is your preferred medium? I prefer... Um, water-based mediums now. I mean, when I was in the sign industry, I used so many toxic paints during that period of time that I'm really concerned about my health at this point. So I use a lot of lead-based paints. I use a lot of um, um, vinyl dyes. Those are very lethal paints that get into your bloodstream and can alter your DNA. That's how strong they are. So uh, maybe about 20 years ago, I switched to water-soluble uh, medium. I can make a really look like watercolor or like oil. So do you have an online portfolio or a blog where people can view your work? Yes, we have three websites up right now. Uh, the Art Poncho is uh, my online marketplace. I also have uh, Poncho Artware, which is my clothing line. And then I have Brazen the Arts, where I do pieces for nonprofit organizations to assist them with Brazen the Fires. And so I do a lot more with online and social network. And why the Poncho? And matter of fact, as, as that leads, and why and why is your nickname Poncho? Is that 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 goes fast. It's, my, it's a story with my dad. It was an old TV show called The Cisco Kid. He had a sidekick named Poncho. My dad kind of played that name with me. I was a junior, and didn't want to use junior, so I used Poncho. So that was how my name kind of evolved. But. Now, do you yourself? I mean, I know you at first initially said you were inspired by your father. Mm -hmm. Do you um, have? Any favorite artists? Quite a few favorite artists, but most of them are my contemporaries. Um, watching the things that they've done in this industry. Uh, Charles Gibb is one, uh, uh, Paul Gannett is another, Joe Holston is another. I'll give you a list of them because it's that many and a lot of folks don't know who they are. And what draws you to their work? Um, 
It's not so much their work, it's their work ethic. And it's the way they market themselves. Uh, you'll never hear me talk about another artist's talent. Although the ones that are on my favorite list are all awesome. Why not? Why would Because this, art is this? not just what you see on the canvas. You know, people don't just buy what's on the canvas, they buy you. You know, they buy your aesthetics, they buy your vision. And so, um, talking to other artists, and you, when you get to see how they live and how they dedicate to what they do, it far surpasses the stuff that they do on the surface of uh, the works that most people buy. So, what other art forms, are, like, are you into music as well, or? No, that would be my son. He's into music. Wow. Um, but I do some sculpture work. I do some two-dimensional, some three-dimensional stuff. Um, have aspirations to do some uh, some larger sculptural images, but you know, just trying to make time to do that. How did you evolve into the whole sculpturing? I think it's always been there. It's always something I wanted to explore, but just didn't have time. And Is that I'm, like a dyed art? Like you don't mm -hmm. really see that. Like, I mean, on a grand scale, but no, I think that the, the misconception that art is everywhere. Folks just don't see it. They say they don't see it. That's because that don't mean it's not going on. I know tons of folks that are doing ceramics, sculpture, wood sculpture, jewelry making, all that stuff is going on. We need to stop saying what we don't see and start looking because it's around. We've been around for 100 years, man, 200 years, 300 years. And um, we often will say what we don't see. I haven't seen any pieces that look like me. Well, you haven't really looked because today to say that means that you might be really separated. Um, now artists are coming to the surface in ways that they never could before. You know, and it's, you know how you Google one thing and you get a thousand different entries. It's just that much. If you were, have to stand a chance now to really stand on the pulse of what's happening. You know, most of us are still acting like we had to go to the library. You know, it's a lot of stuff going on. It's so how, how do you approach the marketing to that? Being that, you know, most people don't see it anymore, you know. Marketing is easier than it's ever been. And when I first started, there was no computer. When I started marketing, I had to go door to door, word of mouth, uh, do uh, uh, advertising, brochures, I had to mail them to folks, I had to have a mailing list, I had to go to the post office. Nowadays, you can post a website and you went from being regional to global with that one decision. So what do you sell the most of? Is it, is it sculpture? Is it? No, no, right now it's prints because that's what most people can afford. Uh, the whole art movement that started in the 80s with the Cosby Show was about accessibility and technology. It, it, it was suddenly it was possible for you to go to a store or a mall and have access to some of the pieces that were on the Cosby Show, for instance. And so that one change alone, accessibility, is that, that changed everything. Because before we saw a lot of things, but it wasn't accessible. Because that same movement would have started when Good Times was on TV with JJ's paintings, that you know Ernie Barnes. Um, but it wasn't accessible at that point. So now I don't know art terms necessarily. I know you have prints and then you have limited prints and then you have, like you just said, prints you could just go to the mall and get. Is, is that how you're set up as well? Do you have limited? I think the main thing you need to talk about is just reproductions. Reproductions. Yes, that's originals. That's a whole separate category. And then how you reproduce it, there's 10 methods in between that you can use to reproduce something. But that was never available three decades ago. Mm -hmm. Now it is. Is that no better? Artists, for an artist? That's better for everybody. Your videographer right now, before y'all couldn't afford to have that equipment, now he can go get a camera with a chip in it and he can do it. What you have in your hands before, you had to do a lot of other work. My son had to, he had to have a, a, a studio, a rep, and all that stuff just to get in the door. He can do his whole video now. That's more power than we've ever had, but we're moving slower than we ever did. Why? Because we're not taking advantage of it. Mm. We still have the same mindset. Our creativity is is flowing the same way it was 20 years ago with all of these tools we have available to us. Why do you think that is? We're jaded. We don't even realize the technology that we have. Some of us have Facebook pages and never posted what we do on it. We chat all day long. <laughs> Most of us haven't thought about selling something on our page. You know, it's a mindset. We're used to consuming and using. We're not used to marketing or selling ourselves. Um, and you can get jaded even with all this technology. I know folks that have the technology and still not using it. I know kids that have iPads and they don't even use it to do homework with. You know, I have folks right now that'll say they don't know something and they haven't even Googled it. 
I have folks that haven't even Googled themselves. You know, so the technology thing is a, it's a plus, but it's a big negative because we get jaded. So, I mean, I know in terms of marketing, or oh, I'm hearing, in terms of marketing that you, I have, you use technology for your marketing. I but have, have you incorporated it in your art? Like, you sound like you're heavy on technology. So, I mean, I know with the ponchos, but is there an ability to do that with your art as well? Yes, it is. Um, what's I, I, like? it, It's just so many different ways you can go with technology. Right now, um, most of the things you see in here, 90% of them are done by hand. Uh, but I'm now beginning to incorporate the computer and some other uh, pro software to begin to do other types of images. Is that for graphic, like online graphics, or just, you just as produce a body it in? Work. Wow. This is a body of work. Have you done it yet? Can we see that somewhere? Yeah, that piece in the middle up there with the piece was done for an Alzheimer's organization. Oh, wow, with all the colors? Yes, that piece is actually a sketch that I did. It was eight and a half by 11. I took it to my guy and I had him print it large on canvas. And then I painted it on top of my sketch. Oh. So something that would have taken two weeks took me six hours. Wow. So how are you, what is your support base? Is it, is it, do you get a great deal of support here? Are you, you're from Baltimore, no? I was born and raised in Baltimore, but if I survived off of Baltimore's support, I would have died a long time ago. So are you international again, or? Yes. Wow. And I have been. Because again, I have global accessibility. I have a, a, a fan base all over the United States and abroad. So internationally, like in what type places? I'm just curious because I know Africa, you have a lot Caribbean, of black uh, London, art. London, Brazil. Do I'm other cultures gravitate as well? Absolutely. They're intrigued by what we're doing in a way, in ways that we aren't. You know, but that could be said. I mean, that, that, folks knew that about jazz back in the day. We wasn't appreciating it back here. They went to Europe and other places, and they were. It's the same thing that's happening today. What, in your opinion, is the hardest step in creating a masterpiece? The hardest step in creating a masterpiece is to not overthink it. Some people will sit down and overthink something. And sometimes when you're overthinking something, you're not actually doing anything. It's like sitting still. It's a fancy form of sitting still. Procrastination. Right. So my thing is that I try to get away from that as much as I can and to blindly get myself in a system of working. So I do a lot of sketches or I'll, I'll do preliminaries and I'll throw them to the side. Sometimes I'm working on 10 pieces at a time. I rotate on them. Um, it's that act of doing that I that's the biggest part of creativity for me. Do you have an opinion on the whole Freddie Gray? I know they're having a rally You can't today. have a black son and don't have an opinion about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, I'm right now sitting here trying to decide how I'm going to depict that because I should. I did a piece of Trayvon Martin when that first happened and um, really had no intention of selling it, but it's gone. Somebody will. And um, I don't want to do it because of that. Um, you never know how people are going to respond to that kind of stuff. Uh, I have my own opinion about how they are martyred after this stuff happens. I have my own opinion about police brutality. Um, but I have to find a way to depict that the way I want to depict it. And I haven't really found it yet. Is the art world, if you would, is that political? Yes, it's very political. If I apply to the average art show and I submit five slides and my work looks too black, I don't get selected. And they take my application fee whether I'm accepted or not. So in this country, most artists are actually financing their own failure. Y'all, is there unity enough to create your own galleries and your own See, artscapes? See, I have my opinion about that. Black artists united during the Renaissance because they had to. They had no outlets nowhere else. Academia was one of the main places they had an outlet. So they had to work amongst each other. Nobody else was supporting them outside of that. Now, artists have tried to do that here, but it's just so vast right now. Artists are not wired to work together. We're very individual, isolated people by nature. And why do you consider this a slight renaissance of sorts? It's a slight renaissance because artists of the last 30 years figured a way to make a living from their work, and artists have never figured that out before. Mm. They start realizing their own power. They start realizing that they had a following and a base that they could survive and not depend on dealers and reps. And, and they all have their places. But artists are now beginning to, rouse, beginning to realize their true power. And I think as that happens, we'll begin to see more of them working together and, and feeling a little bit more comfortable about the projects they get involved in. So this time we're going through right now is an important time. 
I'm just waiting for everybody to realize how much technology is available to us right now and when are we really going to use it to have a real fair fight. That sounds like the next wave for you. Oh, absolutely. I'm watching people do it right now and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love seeing y'all sitting here doing this. I watch my son do music videos with a group of kids that he's working with out of college and the stuff that they can do with the equipment that they have totally blows my mind. It's like, wow, we need to start coming up with excuses. It's time to get busy. I want to thank you so much for your time and it's been an honor and um, we will uh, if you can just kind of go around and take make some of the artwork. Make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Excellent.